atoms. They're the building blocks of our universe, and we have unlocked their power in profound ways to fight diseases, track water resources, and to improve agriculture. Nuclear technologies are being used today to help society adapt to climate change, and more countries are considering adding nuclear power to their energy mix. But when it comes to the protection of our environment, what about nuclear facilities themselves? How can they be closed down in an environmentally friendly way once they have reached the end of their operating life? The commissioning projects are happening all around the world. Lithuania, Korea and Spain, to name but three. Decommissioning is the core element of uh, responsible life cycle planning, not only in nuclear power plants, but as well in research reactors and fuel processing plants. The IAEA is working with member states in many countries to support the implementation and planning of decommissioning projects. One of the strong examples is in France. Aujourd'hui, on doit trouver un mix énergétique et on doit trouver cet équilibre entre ce que le peut apporter le nucléaire avec cette obligation de vérifier les impacts sur l'environnement et de savoir gérer les déchets. With nuclear power providing almost three quarters of its electricity, France has vast experience in both running and dismantling nuclear facilities. One such facility under decommissioning is located in La Hague a small municipality in northwestern France, well known as a beautiful tourist destination and a nature reserve. On the side of La Hague, we have two reprocessing plants in operation and one, our oldest plant, under decommissioning. So you might wonder, what does decommissioning mean? Well, decommissioning covers all the activities that are needed to remove radioactivity from a former nuclear facility. But how exactly can radioactivity be removed from a building? When we receive a facility for decommissioning, the first thing we have to do is to find out where the radioactivity is located, how strong it is, and in which form. With special equipment, cameras, and software, experts create virtual maps of entire buildings which show all radioactive areas. These maps are then used to determine how to decontaminate a facility. In highly radioactive environments, we have to use ROVs, remotely operated vehicles, to go and pick up radioactive sludges or, or dust that have accumulated. Or you could have contamination on the wall. In this case, we have special resins that we can spray on the wall and then peel to remove the contamination. But radioactivity might not only be found in walls or dust. There is also a lot of equipment, tanks and pipes which need to be dismantled. In environments that are still too radioactive, robotic systems help out. All these operations generate a significant quantity of waste. The vast majority of this waste is conventional and can be reused and recycled. But a small portion remains radioactive. This small portion needs to be sorted, characterized and conditioned properly in suitable containers in order to be disposed of safely. Once all the decontamination and dismantling operations have been completed, then we characterize once more the building to make sure that it can be released for future uses. With over 500 employees working in decommissioning, the site in La Hague is considered a major employer today. Decommissioning projects are complex, often decades-long operations, 
undertaken under demanding safety conditions to ensure the well-being of the workforce and minimal impact on the environment. Eventually, they will allow for various sites where nuclear facilities once stood to be reused. Decommissioning is not an activity that comes at the end of the life cycle of a nuclear power plant. It comes at the very beginning, at the design phase even. So this is a clear confirmation of the commitment and the responsible nature of uh, nuclear industry as part of the global uh, efforts to a decarbonized economy in our fight against global warming.